Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. Today I am starting a wall hanging project. This is going to be a whole cloth and I'm going to do trapunto in it. I'm starting out with a piece of cotton. This is just bleached muslin and it is 26 inches square and I've gone ahead and I have uh, folded it in half and ironed a crease on it here. You can see that. And then I'm going to fold it again and it's real important to start out with a square piece of fabric. You want it to be as square as you can possibly get it. And I do that by using my uh, rulers that I use to cut fabric with. And I pair two of them up so that I can make certain that um, everything is square. Okay, now I've got this piece of fabric will be divided in quarters when I open it up, but I also want um, some diagonal lines to go by. So I am going to go ahead and fold this at the crease so that it meets up to the crease here. Now you can also um, draw a line on this with a water soluble marker and do your lines that direction, but this is a small piece. Now if I had a large quilt that I was doing, I would use a um, larger, or I would use a, a ruler and water soluble markers to do this with, but this is going to be small. Um, when I get done, it's going to be about 24 inches square. Now I have um, eight lines marked in here. And now I'm going to set my design in here. Okay, now I'm going to come in about four inches from the edge and draw a line to the point where this diagonal line comes in. And I'm going to go all the way around and do this. And hopefully everything will be square. Now if it doesn't always work out, um, perfectly square, there's a, a way to work around that and we'll see how this goes and then I'll show you if it does not work out perfectly then I can show you how I can fix that. Now this is just a guideline for placing my pattern. Now the way I uh, work with whole cloth, uh, especially with whole cloth, whether it has trapunto or not, is I decide what size I want first and then I will um, fill it in with design. And I'm going to use uh, this design here. This is a design that I created my, myself about um, know, 10 or 12 years ago. And I am call, call this a wishbone heart and this is just half of the heart. So if we flip this over, mirror image it, it would create a heart. And I'm going to use this um, in a different way, though. And I have drawn, this is um, the computer-generated side. And then I just traced it on the back with a Sharpie pen so that I have, can, can mirror image this, because this is going to be mirror imaged all the way around. And I'm going to start in a corner. And this heart go this way and I'm going to move my ruler over here on that and I'm going to place this under here and I can see it through the fabric really well and get the placement I want and I'm lining up bring this closer I'm lining up this curve here and the tops and this top here along with this mark that I have on the quilt and with the crease. And hopefully this will fit in here. There we go. And I want it to fit from here to here. 
And if I have to fudge a little bit, I can do that. There we go. Now I'll just have to trace over it with my water soluble marker. I came up with a whole slew of these kinds of designs. Um, they're kind of they remind me of the fretwork you will see on a lot of wrought iron work. And I just made a whole bunch of different designs and uh, put them down on paper, drew them on a, a computer. And this was far enough back that there wasn't a lot of good software to do this with, so it's it's pixelated here. But um, I just need to scan these and um, redo them in some newer software, and uh, they'll turn them into a vector image so that they won't pixelate like that. So that is uh, a project for me sometime in the future. Okay, so the next section, I'm, I flip this design over, and I'm going to meet those sides up, and I just have to keep fiddling with the placement until you get it the, where you want it. And those two sides are going to meet right here. Now you can look in a lot of um, design books, especially um, Dover copyright free books. They have a lot of interesting architectural books that you can find designs in that you can use for whole cloth quilting or even for um, just any kind of quilting that you want to do. It doesn't have to be whole cloth. You can use it in a pieced quilt. Okay, we're going to flip to a new side, and then I'm going to flip the design again. And place it. And trace. Now this is going to be the quilting line. This is going to be where I'm going to quilt. Um, first thing I'm going to do is to do the trapunto. And there are different ways to do machine trapunto. And what I'm doing on this one will be um, real trapunto. will be cutaway trapunto. There is a faux trapunto that I also use. And that has quite a few less steps in it. Uh, and it looks just as good, and kind of depends on how much time you want to put into your project. Like I said before, um, I decide what size I want my quilt to be and then I choose the design to go in it. You could also choose your design first and then design your, uh, figure out what size your quilt is going to be from that. There's nothing wrong with that. That works just as well. And especially if you're doing a competition quilt and you have to have it a certain size, then that's where you start. So far this is turning out really well for me. It's Everything seems to be fitting. But we'll see when we get to the very last border and see how that works. Now here it's coming up a little bit over that. So that's kind of thick anyway. So I'm just going to cut that back. So just alter your design as you need to to get it to fit into your space. And this one I lost track of it a little bit. And I'll show you how to fix that. We've got two lines here. I'll show you how to fix that in just a little bit. 
Now when you make a mistake while you're drawing and you want to um, you can decide whether to leave it or you can erase it and if you're going to have trouble remembering which line you need to be quilting on then you should erase it and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. A lot of times um, it was just a little jog I can usually figure out which line I'm supposed to be following. But if it's a big one like this, that might be a little harder to remember. Okay, here's my last piece, my last section. I'm going to flip the one over again. And actually this one's going to fit pretty well. Okay. And here's what we have so far. See if I can zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Well, as you can see, probably most of it. Well, that's what we have so far. Now we could stop here, we could put something in the middle. First, I want to show you how I'm going to get rid of this line. And see, I already forgot which line I needed to erase. So let me pull this, push this under here. Place this under here and we'll see. Looks I need to keep the inner one and erase the outer one. Okay, these are eraser pens. And I've had these for quite a while and they're getting really worn. Um, the fluid that's in them, I'm not sure what it is, but these do go dry pretty fast. So what I do is I have this little cup I use to fill my iron with water and I put a little bit of water in the bottom and then I'll set the, the felt tip into the water and it remoistens them and then I can use them like that. There's also you can use a um, um, water brush. You can get those in the craft paint sections of craft stores. And then that will dry and it'll be gone and then I'll know to use this one. Now I've gone on a little bit and it's a, removing some of that so I'll have to go back and once it's dry and then redraw that. In part two I'll show how I drew that center design. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.